In this video, we're going to assume that you are already familiar with the basics of writing object-oriented code and review some of the fundamental stylistic aspects of writing good quality code. Our focus will primarily be on good practice. In other words, we will look at things that are not actually required by the Java compiler, but are coding habits or practices that we choose to adopt because they are beneficial. You might wonder why we bother if the compiler does not require them. The main reason is that we want our code to be easily understood by anyone who chooses to read it. If you are a student, then you will obviously want your examiners to be able to understand what you have written, so that you get a good mark. But readability is also important in a wider context where other people might have to read your code or, most especially, where you have to read someone else's code. There are a few things more frustrating in programming than being given someone else's code to read and not being able to make sense of it. If you can get into the habit of coding well, then everyone benefits in the long run. Let's start with a basic class that's designed to model the module that a student might take as part of their course. The class will be relatively simple because we're primarily interested here in the stylistic aspects. When we open a class source file, the first thing we probably want to know is what this class is for or what does it do. The place to look for that is the java.com comment right at the start of the file. When you create a new class, Try to get into the habit of always writing something descriptive in the class comment as the very first thing. If you don't do it straight away, it's likely to get forgotten. You don't have to write much, just the basics of what the class is for and the sort of data that instances will be storing. In general, there's no need to go into details of data types here. You can see here what we have written, and we've also included details of the author and date. If you're not sure how to use java.tags, things like at author, at param and at return, look up how to do that because good quality code will always include them in the comments. The class has a standard class header. Remember to always use an initial uppercase letter for the names of classes and, in general, the only time you should see an initial uppercase letter is for class names. Definitely avoid using an initial uppercase letter for method names and standard variable names, otherwise your code will look very odd and confusing to its readers. Immediately inside the opening curly bracket of the class body, we have to define the fields or instance variables, in this case name and mark. Notice that both have been designated as private. This is a very important part of good code quality, but for some reason it's one of the most neglected aspects. Defining instance fields as private supports the important object-oriented principle of encapsulation. If you like, think of it as a way to secure an object's data inside a capsule safe from interference from other objects in the program. Hopefully you can see, even from this small example, how important that could be. If we don't define the variables as private, then potentially another part of the program could change a student's mark and the module code would have absolutely no way to prevent that from happening, or even of being aware that it has happened. But by making the variables private, all changes to them must be channeled through methods defined in the module class and we have control over what gets written there. Note that the variable names follow our rule of using an initial lowercase letter. One final point to note about the fields is that there is a brief comment before each describing what they are for and any particular constraints on their values. Try to get into a similar habit in your code. Next we have a constructor. Once again we've written a brief descriptive comment using javadoc notation. The comment describes the purpose of the parameter and notes other features that are relevant to the initialization process. The constructor uses the standard convention of using the same name for the parameter as the name of the field it will be used to initialize, hence the use of the keyword this to distinguish between the two different variables called name. Notice that we have explicitly initialized the variable mark even though it would naturally be given the value 0 by default. We prefer to be in the habit of explicitly initializing all the instance variables in this way to ensure that none of them gets forgotten. While you could easily argue that there's no point with such a small example class, getting into this habit with small classes means we are much more likely to do it when it really does matter in classes with far more fields. Immediately after the constructor, we have two standard getter or accessor methods, getName and getMark. Notice that once again we've included Java.comments comments for them, even though they are such simple methods. We have included both a description of their purpose and the at return documentation. It's not uncommon to see code with either or both of these parts missing for getter methods. We prefer to fully document because sometimes only the generated Java doc documentation and not the source code 
will be available to someone working with your classes and clear documentation leaves no room for doubt about the purpose or function of each method. Something else to notice is the way in which the curly brackets of the constructor and the getters have been placed in similar positions. Consistency of layout is important. You can observe the same idea in the position of the statements inside the bodies of the constructor and the getters. Each has been indented to the same position, four spaces in this particular case. In general, exactly where you place the curly brackets or how much you indent by is not the most important thing. It is consistency because that will make your code easier to read by everyone. Next, we don't have a setter or mutator method for the course name because that is set on construction and won't be changed during the lifetime of the associated instance but we do have a setter for the mark value because that is not set to anything other than zero on construction. Once again, we have fully documented the purpose of the method and particularly, we have been clear that the expected value of the parameter must lie between zero and 100. This information is very important to any user of our class or reader of the documentation. The valid mark range could be anything, zero to 20, zero to 50, even maybe minus 20 to plus 20. We haven't written the class to be completely flexible over mark ranges, which we could have done. We have written it to work with marks from 0 to 100. Notice too that we have been explicit about whether the limits of the range 0 and 100 are included as valid values or excluded. Again, this is essential information for the reader. The job of the setter is obviously to allow the value of one of the fields to be set and in so doing it completes the core aspect of encapsulation made possible by declaring the instance variables as private. It protects the variable from being set to any value other than one that is within the allowed range and this is the module class that defines that allowed range. Hence the first thing the setter does before setting the variable from the parameter is to check the parameter's value. Only if the parameter's value is in the correct range is the instance variable's value updated. The importance of this role of a setter cannot be overemphasized. It is a guardian of an object's internal state and keeps the object from ever getting into an incorrect state. Note how the error message is informative so that any error in calling the method with a wrong value can be easily diagnosed and corrected. In essence, the message contains three important details that should be considered including in most error messages. It alerts that a calling error has occurred. It shows the value that is in error. It provides information that explains exactly what was wrong with the value. Something worth observing about the body of the setMark method is that there is often not a particularly neat way of formatting strings that involve lots of concatenation. Here we have broken a single statement over three lines with indentation on the second and third to try to indicate that they are really still part of the preceding line. Finally, there is a two-string method that returns a formatted version of the module name and mark Notice that the style is exactly the same in terms of documentation and layout as all the other methods in the class. In this video, we have revised the basics of good style in writing object-oriented Java classes. Although the class we've looked at is one of the most basic, all of the aspects we have covered can be applied over and over again in every class you write. Forming good habits will make your coding easier because you won't have to keep thinking about what to do and will create a good impression of your coding skills in anyone who reads your code.